Hello and welcome back. Okay, in my last video, I was doing the integration of my initial audio circuit here and playing some tunes. But while I was doing that, I did discover what I think is two problems with my clock circuit. Well, one was definitely a problem and the other was just a piece of unexpected behavior that I think I can improve. So what I'd like to do is um, show you the problem I found and see if I can work through it and uncover the source of it. This relates to the breakpoint functionality, which is an output line from pipeline stage two. And I've got a break instruction at the end of the tune loop. So I'm gonna force it to play the tune that I was playing in that video. And I'll, I'll kind of skip through it quickly and we'll uh, discuss the break operation. Right, so the break instruction has activated the break line, which fires this MOSFET, which is the equivalent of pushing this button that drops the clock back into single step mode. But I discovered one of the problems when I came along and pushed this button to demonstrate high speed mode. It doesn't do anything. It can't take it out the break. And that's because this button doesn't actually wire into the clock selector. So I want to look at that later, but I want to look at the actual underlying problem I was worried about. So if I switch to the middle speed clock, then I can switch into the high speed clock. And I want you to look at the break point when I do that. So it runs through the entire music sequence very quickly because it's running off the crystal at 2.5 megahertz and it stops at what we assume is roughly the right point but the break line isn't on. So my guess is that the clock was operating too quickly and it somehow didn't respond in time to actually still have the breakpoint instruction present here. So what I want to do is fire up the oscilloscope and see if we can prove that's the case. Okay, so I'm gonna plug the yellow channel into the actual status to show we've entered break state. So that'll be the falling edge. And let's take a look at the clock line. Okay, I'm going to run the clock at the mid speed and see what a successful run looks like. It's interesting, that yellow line is falling quite slowly. That's interesting though. That's a very short clock pulse there. Okay, so let's try the high speed mode where it doesn't work. Okay, every single time we do it, we get this tiny little blip on the clock line doesn't even go all the way as high as the other clocks. Right, so we're running off the high speed clock here. So here's the high speed clock, and that's both an input into the selector and it's used to latch the selection forward. Okay, so what's happening here is the rising edge of the clock causes the current state of the selection to get moved forward in the, the latches which then causes this to be selecting a different clock, i.e. the single step input, which isn't there. So this is the clock that's triggering the latch load, and that's enough to make the latch operate. But as soon as that goes high, the outputs on the selector change to switch to selecting the single step clock, which is low. That makes sense. I should have seen this coming because I did see something similar on the slower clock when I was designing this circuit, but I didn't expect it to happen here. But in hindsight, I should have done. Okay, what I need is for the clock that goes to the latch to actually be slightly in advance of the clock that it then selects here. Doesn't need to be by much. 
Now previously when I want to delay a signal I've used an inverter and I don't have any of those spare but we do have a spare NAND gate there. Let's try one of those. So we'll connect those together there. So that's the clock still, the high speed clock still going directly to drive the latch. I need to bridge those two inputs together. And then the output from that goes to the input to the selector. Now this clock's actually going to be inverted, which kind of doesn't matter over here, but that might help us out. Because this clock is constantly running, so it being inverted shouldn't make any difference to us. But actually, rather than just the delay of this gate, we've actually got half a cycle for this to settle before this outputs, unless it loads at the front. Let's give it a try. Nice work. Of course, now the brake line is held, so pushing this button does nothing, which was the other problem I mentioned. There's absolutely no sign of that errant extra clock pulse. Okay, so now we've got this second problem where I can switch to the middle speed clock and that change happens. And then I can switch to the high speed clock, but I can't jump straight to the high speed clock. Okay, I've triggered the reset somehow there. The reason for that is quite simple. Only the first two of these lines actually go into the selector. So we know we've got the third state just because neither of these two are selected. So when I do that, I'm essentially holding both buttons down, which is the same as when the brake line is being held and I'm pushing this button and that will work. If I hold that and push that button, nothing happens. So I think what I need to do is use the upper two bits as the selection inputs. So let's leave that one in the same place. Move that one there. Now we need to modify the inputs to the selector to align with the new uh, status quo. Okay, so right now, both of these are high, so we're selecting the third input and we actually want the single step. So that goes in there and the single step works. So we're already selecting the intermediate speed there, that's good. So that must mean that one will get us to the high speed. That was pretty easy. And then if both of these lines are selected, that means both the inputs are low, so we'll go down to the zero entry, which we just need to not be floating. So I'll just bridge those two again. So high speed mode, gets to the brake, push it again, and it runs again. That's awesome. That's brilliant. These buttons are now working exactly as I wanted. I do need to update the circuit diagram though. Right, okay, first up we need to get that inverter onto the clock line coming out off the crystal. So it currently outputs on clock three. Clock three is an input to the 74HCT74. So this is what's holding the mode inputs. Now we changed this one to mode three. Now I hope I managed to explain this in a way that people were able to follow. Because we've got three modes that we want to be able to output, but they're active low lines that are like a radio button. So one of the three is low at any given point in time. And I was using the first two mode lines, because if, if any one of those three lines is low, there's gonna be a binary output. But when the, the lines are being changed, two lines are lower 
And that state happens when we're switching away from either mode two or mode three, or switching back to mode two or mode three from break state. And we want those behaviors to actually switch to the higher state mode away from the break state in mode one. So I need to change this clock free. So it's clock free delayed. Is that spare NAND gate we were using? Yes, we just pass that in and then the output becomes the delayed clock free. Now we just have to reorder these to match the reordering we had to do to fix the inputs. So actually clock two is the one we didn't have to move, but then clock one and clock three were inverted. So that reordering just matches the reshuffling we did on the inputs. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, I was almost ready to send off this circuit for PCB manufacture. So you'll see all the PCB design when I get that back. And you'll probably see a little bit tagged on the end where I uh, fix the routing for these lines to resolve this issue. Okay, I think this wire can be a shorter one now. Get the scope back out. So, this is all fixed now. So I'm pleased with that. There was one other issue I came across when I was working on the Spooky Scary Skeletons Halloween tune, is I added a Happy Halloween to the LCD, but it actually didn't work right. It started off by cropping the first few letters I was trying to display off. And the reason for that is ever since I put the new clock in, I've been running the processor a lot quicker. And I was actually getting to the point where I could output characters here faster than the LCD display circuit that I built initially can quite handle it. And that's because the LCD module actually outputs a busy line, which you can read back. And I think it was the display clear is setting the busy line, but then I was starting to write the Happy Halloween text before it was quite ready. And that was in the slowish speed clock. So in the 2.5 megahertz mode, it's just not gonna work at all. So to get this to work properly with the higher speed clocks, I would need to actually implement the busy line, which means read back from the display. So that might be an interesting thing to spend a little bit of time doing. That will probably fall in a gap when I've got a bunch of um, PCBs waiting to be returned. So I want to finish doing a bunch of um, design work on the ALU PCB conversion before we worry about that. I have had some requests to do a video on how I create the music data for the sound module. So that's probably going to uh, come up quite soon. But until then, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.